afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another riveting, exciting, amazing propaganda cast from your host, Imperial Dane. The one, the only, master of propaganda. Off here to 2 vs 2 on the road to Kharkov. In the north, it is Asha Blah, and apparently this is Tiramisu, according to reliable intelligence sources, meaning I beat it as someone. Well, no, not really. But apparently this is Tiramisu. Because, yeah. Go figure. Finally, here for the German army, Deutschland. Rolling out here with the third SS Panzer de Schorn Tortenkopf in the south. It is Mr. Nobody and Crowd Police are fighting for the Soviet Union and the First Guards Mechanized Call. We got airborne troop tactics here for Mr. Nobody, Crowd Police for the third combined arms. We got motor and shock rifle, lots of infantry, a bit of tank machine gun, and mine versus Overwatch. <laughs> Special operations. Luffer for ground forces, breakthrough fortifications and special operations with infantry, storm pioneer, medical crate bulletins there for Ashab Lobby. Got constantly there, pushed back with the storm pioneers up north here as crowd is already encountering stiff Teutonic resistance in the southwest. Ashab is advancing as well here for the glory of Safarzaland. Wiring off his one, we got Overwatch here, so two Darksons already chosen here within the first two minutes of the game. Heavy photo build there for Ashab so far. Tiramisu there with double focus as well. Mr. Nobody here with lots of conscripts. Maxims and comps are there for crowd pleaser. Mr. Nobody is obviously going to be using the airdrop weapons here, which of course are part of the airborne doctrine here for the Soviets, where they can get SVT 40s for them. That will increase their firepower notably at a reasonable cost. We got Maxim up, comes to this jump on us charging in though. Sadly, the Maxim not going to be able to assist here in the south. We got the Asher Blotter here in the carve point. Mr. Nobody there doing what he can for. Uh, Kormelad Stalin, and here comes there, trying to specialize the Strion Punch. The Strion Punch is making short work here of Crowd Pleaser's conscripts. And yeah, that could be a wipe the hand there again. There you go. That's a bit of a big blow there for Crowd Pleaser. Already trying to 40 manpower down the drain. Plus, we can see now Asher Blood's linking up with Tiramisu here to flank up behind Mr. Nobody, who's slightly pushing back. Asher Blood there to sort of hit this exposed rear side. That's going to hurt Mr. Nobody quite a bit. He's going to have to somehow manage to quickly reorganize his forces. To deal with this sudden German flank attack, and there we go. And Tiramisu goes here for breakthrough, meaning, of course, Panzer We'll be interested to see how that one works out this time around with the new improved Panzer Versailles. Well, improved and improved, anyways. Sturm Panis right here was quick to focus them down. Very good work there. Usually, that is your best bet with conscripts. Focus down the Sturm Panis swiftly and then focus down the other bastards. We got some engineers coming up here as well, but going to have to get those up fast since the exit has been covered up. We got Panzer Versailles on the way there for uh, Tiramisu. Follows their pushback by the conscripts. We got a maximum all the way there for crowd pleaser, so no infant replacements yet. I could imagine they're going for either combined arms or guard motors, and then going for a lot of guardsmen to catch up there. He could also go for shock rifle. We can get the first airdrop weapons in there for Mr. Nobody. We'll have to see if he does that. Up north here, maximum being swarmed here. As crowd pleaser is taking advantage here of uh, Asher Blas and Tiramisu's assault there, sort of trying to flank up behind them, being pushed back to then sort of quickly advance up the right hand side. Good response there by Crowd Pleaser, good read on the situation. Sandbags up here, preparing for the next assault here by the 3rd SS, Panzer de Schorn Totenkopf. Initially, and this, hence the name was actually, I believe, recruited from uh, amongst concentration camps guard. Yeah, I know, very cheerful though, later on the wall they would have struggled a bit to sort of find sources there. So, you know. But, you know, sort of a little fun fact. In fact, most of these, so we say, initial Waffen SS divisions sort of had some of those, uh, shall we say, um, origins. For example, the 4th SS Polisai was recruited from amongst initially the police, partly due to a surplus of police men, and they sort of had to do something with them. Bunch of formed in security divisions. Some were sort of kept and some were switched over to the Waffen SS. So, uh, some few fun facts there. Maximum engineers moving up. He's got some pressure there. Up. German army is losing a bit of ground here. So what's left here for crowd please it's useful to see it's going for more contrast though very good Mr. Nobody I think has yet to make any oh there we go we've got one weapons crate there Stone Pound's going straight for the car point here as we can see that Mr. Nobody's been here just for sure to support crowd please though of course he has inadvertently left his side of the map then more open here to a German push and as you blow here of course is quick to explore that opening here versus Mr. Nobody though of course at the same time crowd please and Mr. Nobody's making a bit better progress here more engineers on the way you should have probably grabbed those SVT-40s and put them to use against the fascists as Asher Blot here as victorious advances for Deutschland. Up north here, we're going to with the, with the Volkswagen there, pushing them back up north here. Continue the assault here by Tiramisu and Asher Blot. His panzers there are not making the best progress so far. We'll be interested to see if he actually goes for the Sturm Office here. Might be quite neat. We got stuff exploding here. 
I'll leave some flares, obviously. Also, at the same time, Mr. Nobody's gone very far north here, with the engineers hitting the cut of the fuel point there, trying to that would slow down the German resource. And there we go, we've got the country back with the SVT 40 semi automatic rifle. It was intended, by the way, for that one to become the main Soviet rifle. But, you know, the whole World War II thing happened before they could sort of get it ready, so it was sort of, you know, hand out where they could. I've got some naval troops around Sevastopol, I've got some were heavily equipped with SVT 40s, whereas again, most had to make do with most of guns. But, anyways. I'm now in the folks going to with the newly equipped conscripts, other squad charging 40. You can soon drop in another set of airdrop weapons. You can also like to go for heavy machine guns, the Dishka. Airborne rally points are now also available. And of course, you also got the uh, guards airborne troops soon being within range here for Mr. Nobody. Hitting the point here, fuel point there captured. In the south here, the assault continues there. As you blow, of course, doing whatever can be done to stem the third advance there. Both third players are the support and companies. Now they're going here for the Special Rifle Command. Carl Font being hit as well. Good play there by Crowd Police. And we got a mechanized ring up here for Tiramisu. Bad group headquarters up here for Azure Blood. Right, both of them with healing. Very good teamwork there. Jaeger's out here for Azure Blood to assist. Tiramisu going for the looks. They're going to need some anti tank weapons soon now. But we do have one sisterly field gun here on the way for Crowd Police. Very good. They're certainly doing quite a good job. They're supporting each other, which of course is really crucial in two versus two matches. But similarly, so are Asher Blunt and Cleveland. So what we're seeing is essentially just two pretty good two versus two teams there going at it, both able to support each other very flexibly and you know react and act. So that's very nice to see here. Very nice. And of course, in two versus two games, that's really crucial. We got a fifth cal oh, the dish cut there drop in the third fifth cal machine gun essentially. Max and backing up here. Dropped it down here. It's going to use the SVT 40 once, which we're going to retreat anyways for reinforcements to quickly get it forwards there. And there you go. Crowd please with the third combined arms army. It's going to probably go in for some guardsmen, obviously. Could also be using the ambush gun tactics. Not something you see a lot, but it can be quite effective. Can be quite effective at times. And of course, howitzers and bombing strikes down the road. Nobody there can soon consider going for the guards' airborne troops. And he's going to get under fire from the folks. He's got the looks flanking up behind the engineers, going to cause a bit of harm there. South here, we got to push up there by Mr. Nobody with engineers. Lions here, defense for Asher Blot are a bit weak, so they better progress there. We've got the dish coming up with conscripts. Not they have been rapidly reinforced from somewhere. I think he's just merged with them, actually, which makes sense. But there you go, dish opening up, forces immediately suppressed. Up here, though, we got a big push here by Tiramis, which is completely thrown off. Crowd loses lines. His field gun, the Enforcer, will seemingly extended. Field gun cleared out. There's a bit of loss there. He's got a second field gun on this time from Mr. Nobody. He gets the looks, which is certainly going to help compensate. But still, the Germans with the field gun is going to be a bit rubbish there for the Red Army. Let's see if I rain down here. That field gun falling back. He doesn't risk losing. And I went to the Bashis. And we got here another airdrop weapon to supply there on inbound for Mr. Nobody. Looks like he's not beginning for the guards' airborne troops anytime soon. Of course, he could go for them at any time he wants to. Now the line's going to wait there for Asher Blot, sending in plenty of artillery there to bombard the Bolsheviks. Comes there on the wrong side of the cover. They're quick to bounce back on it. By the way, no, very consistent use of sandbags here by um, Mr. Nobody. Thumbs up there. Bit overlooked, I think, by some sort of players, but good sandbagging can be quite effective. Same line's going almost down there for Asher Blot. Probably going to be going for the Shriar Pundit quarters anytime soon. In the south here, push back here as the engineers bring up. Note that Mr. Nobody's just causing it, making a, shall we say, soft retreat. Rather than just a full retreat, he's pulling back there to defend the next line of defense and then bring up more troops to launch a counterattack, I imagine. Let's we'll see what ends up being equipped here with the SVT 40. Engineers probably can also pick it up and they can still then upgrade with other weapons, rest of the Soviet conscripts. If they upgrade, they can't really upgrade with anything else. Come to that push back the folks in there. The SVT 4 is doing quite good work. We've got an MG41 there for Tiramisu, putting a halt to that pretty rapidly and aggressively. In the south here, nice flank assault there by Asher Vlot, attacking with the Jaegers from the front, and then having the folks just flank in. Disco they're joining in to try and stem the flow of uh, fascists there. And oh, we do get the guards airborne out here for Mr. Nobody, using here the sniper model. Still, basically, six man SVT 40 equipped squad can be up with submachine guns or with triple DP light machine guns. Have access to grenades and they can call in the strafing runs as well. So well, a rather elite unit. The Soviet Airborne, you know, did perform larger drops. The problem is in most cases, they weren't particularly successful in most cases. They ended up basically just falling into uh, the background, joining up with partisans, and then sort of fighting alongside them in a lot of cases. So, little fun fact there. 
Are we moving about there? PPJ 41s being equipped there, increasing of course their fire pack exponentially, giving them access to fire superiority and smoke grenades, forming up of course a solid assault unit. Charging forwards here, the engineers from on the right flank, trying to move about here, avoiding the machine gun. Very good play there by Mr. Nobody. Ooh, got suppressed anyways. Bad luck there, that can happen. Oh, we got the grenade off there, doing a bit of nasty damage, has to retreat, it's got line of gun fire raining down. Crowd pleases back when the salt here up the reese side with conscripts maximum backing it all up, going for the fuel point again, very good. In the south here, Asher Blot is pushing forwards once more, and we got a third line of infantry guns? That's bananas. Triple line infantry guns, that is quite a lot of artillery here, and that's going to be a bit difficult there for the Surge to survive, of course, and get rid of any of the light infantry guns, it's going to be huge then. And there's also a chance that, that Asher Blot might be committing to too many support weapons here. Which could leave them over in the longer run a bit out dangling if they say, you know, oh, I don't know, the Serbs just go for a lot of tanks. The line for guns, for example, will quickly fall short. And there you go, Ankrev is also going for the Stukas of Fuss. I definitely feel like here they're making a bit of a misjudgment. Like, they're going for too much heavy artillery. Can I extend and extend? Again, the map is smaller. Artillery is going to be more effective because, again, you're just going to have to more naturally just push your troops together more closely. And again, Road to Kharkov is just sort of one of the natural, well, blobs just happen. Maps, of course, well, you can't really avoid it with two versus two players. I still don't get it why it's in the two versus two map pool, to be honest. But I will feel like this heavy emphasis on artillery is a bit much there, but I imagine you're just going to try and wipe the Surge as hard as possible. Of course, for the Surge, the priority right now is going to be pushing up medium armor as fast as possible and punish the Germans for going for that all that artillery. If you're going to do that, of course, they have a really good chance. Got the Stukas whispering up here. Line's going to clear it out. It's going to have to retreat those comps before they get wiped. We got the guards airborne here back here ready to go once more with their PPSH 41s. Disco falling a bit back here. Next, I'm holding the folks up. We got sandbags down there by Tillamy. So, very good work here. Folks coming up here. Guards many fine from inside the house. Going to be a problem here for the folks since they're getting kind of flanked here. And we've got the Stukas for flying. He's quick to get out of there. And in this case, it's the Maxim that's the target. Oh, was actually aiming for both there. Very, very ambitious there by Tillamese. So and all in fact, worked out perfectly there. More weapon drops out there. And we go. Mechanized armor company up there. Crowd please and email those coming to the T-70. Basically ensuring he can keep up the pressure. While Mr. Nobody then pushes for armor. Nice teamwork there. So it plays the my Osman at least getting up one fuel cache to assist. Got the guard table in the center of the Skjorn Punnies, but in this case they're losing out due to too many Germans with too many guns. Jaeger's holding out there. Line for guns, I'm noting, are being spread out. Apparently I'm to ensure you know, more coverage, but also ensure they don't just get, say, hit back with one decisive artillery strike there or just one push. So there's a lot of, you know, purposes to this. T7 on the Panzer Salida pushing them back. More Sandbox up there for Tito Miso. He's certainly being very uh, fastidious about that. Asher Blah though, there, got a truck on the slam giving the Schwer Panzer Quarters, there we go, it's going to have to help protect the area here, making the line for guns a bit safer as well. I imagine crowd please uh, might also be going there for the T-70, to that way, like Mr. Nova, of course, go for the T medium armor, so you can also then go for the howitzer, to that way, try and counter the light infantry guns, and that regard, there's already layers within layers of plans here. Mines up here, by to cover the fight in case of any sort of happening up there, by uh, the Germans. By the fascists, and there you go, a lot more artillery fire here. Most of the country I'm not equipped with those 40s. I think there's another crate drop there, but can't see where that ends up. Ah! Crowd please, they got it. Nice teamwork there. Nice teamwork. Just being suppressed with the MU34. Continue to so far this, making it harder here though for Mr. Nobody to push through there. Bit risky, and honestly, you might want to bring up, consider bringing up a mortar for smoke screens. Because this is a bit on the uh, reckless side. But there you go, big two points wise, the Germans have a lead here over Crowd Please and Mr. Nobody. The first guards making us call though is not to be deterred. Crowd Please, they can soon go for the T-34 and 6. Of course, you could also go for Katrushes or anything else though. I probably would recommend the T-34 and 6 first and then bring up some tank destroyers or assault guns. T-7 is in here. Crowd Please can now roughly begin building the howitzer. And I imagine he might be likely to go for that soon enough. Crowd Pleaser likes his howitzers. Comes with their dealing with the MG34. T70 there dodges destruction in the south. We got a bit of a slow advantage. Guards there, but they're holding up. 
Tillamese has not really done a lot with the docks except just go for single panzers. It's what we've seen no officers, sadly. Gasping there, running continually for crowd pleasers, so no sign of the howitzer. Again, I feel like a howitzer right now would be a very strong choice here. Heading for the northern fuel point, this can't stop, taking too much damage. That problem, I can lighten guns there being a bit the problem. Big push here by Mr. Nobody, no sign of armor yet. Guessing it's going to be either the tank shot of Katusha then, or he's just forgotten about the T-34. Another Stukas was there for Tidamiso, so they are committing extremely heavily to artillery. And there you go, Mr. Nobody's also going for the Katusha. I feel like that's a bit of the, uh, not the strongest move there. Again, I would prefer seeing tanks at this stage. But in the end, it's actually blood. They're going for the Panzer IV. Not seeing any damage here from the consoles and the disc are backing them up. There goes to just fire. Second one almost done as well here for Tiramisu. And we got the disc of dead. Up north, sitting up here for another assault here. That's going to be difficult, I think, to pierce through a crowd pleasers lines easily. He is. Reasonably well dug in. Could choose they're almost done. Crowd please, meanwhile, we're getting the guy I think would have gone for the artillery as soon as possible. Hasn't. And Mr. Nobody again would feel like we're just going to go for the tanks instead of going for the artillery. Well, we'll have to see how that works. I mean, obviously, again, clustered maps so of the Katrusha, obviously, by extension, is also going to be great against that. But now, we got Ashley Blart there with a Panzer Fort, and that's definitely going to give the Soviets a bit of a harder time. Since they're heavily reliant on anti-tank guns, and again, there's a lot of artillery they could quickly wipe out those anti-tank guns with a bit of bad luck. Guards having the pushing force, they go gaining veteran two, gaining additional lethality. But the Panzer Force on the field, Katrice is moving up, but it's gonna have to fall back already since it could already risk getting rushed there by the Panzer Four and then destroyed, which would be a catastrophic loss here for the Red Army. The North Moss troopers was fire, still no sun artillery there from Crowd Pleaser. Katrice they're going at it. Okay, the line guns now have actually been put together close to the Katrice Barrage here, but actually doing a lot of damage. There we go. One line gun silenced as the crew is killed by the sheer shock over there with the rockets. Second one there. Almost taken out too. But it looks like he was forced to cancel the barrage there as uh, the Panzer was charging in his line and there was collapsing faster. Then something that collapses very fast. I know, the American economy. After the Wall Street crack. Anyways. Crash. Field can never burn here then infantry. Blasting with high close runs, causing huge cash there to Ashley Blah, who bunched up the infantry a bit too close. We got punches now equipped with panzer tricks to help deal with vehicles and potentially any armor though again. So far the armor showing here from the Soviets is a bit on the lighter side. Fresh soul up here trying to threaten the German fuel point. I imagine Tiramisa at this point might just try and stall here for the Arctic or leaving Ashley Blocks and then do the actual armor work. Got a rocket strafe there ready for Mr. Nobody. Panforming up, got a field gun nearby. Comes with an anti-tank grenade ready to threaten you though. And there we go, crowd police finally goes for that how to say rather late though. And even then he could easily get away with the building the making nice armor company afterwards when bring up armor. Mr. Nobody here can go for the T-34-76, I would recommend that one, it should be fine. There you go, T-34 on the way there for Mr. Nobody, very good. Gosh, up north here, right here by German infantry on the command there of Tiramiso. How's the slowly getting ready? Back here, troops are reinforcing. How's it good to go? In a few seconds. At which point things are going to get a bit more difficult here for Ashley Blot and for Tiramiso. Now we got an issue in sixth on the way for crowd, please. Interesting choice there. Certainly some cheaper anti. Armour and of course also doubles as artillery. Now the question is where's the how to gonna land? We got the guards here when they're going straight for the folks gonna do this. fires. Get you ready to fire again. In fact, he's firing. Ooh, right here at the dug in position by Tidamiso. Very good to target there. There we go. Just huge casualties. Men dying in droves as they're torn apart. 
by the sheer impact of the rockets. Crap, please are there. Better to fire again there. Flying around here looking to cause some damage. A bit of damage done, but so far no kills that can easily change. I think, think so far most of the casualties are squirrels. T-54 versus Panzer 4. T-54 not doing too well. Field and cleared up. Bit of a bad luck here. We got the disco holding up the south here. Constant Marines are assist. They're going to rush that field. Going to recruit up north here. Assault continues out under the command of Tiramisu here against crowd pleasers. Uh, lines that quite doing well. There you go. Got a rocket strike called in here. I think around the Panzer 4. Close one there, I think, but almost worked out. But there were a few issues there with the house absorbing some of the rockets. All the way, the first guard's mechanized core finds up in the pit on the back foot here against Ashia Blot and Tidamisa's assault. Rocket fire here, T 54 taking heavy damage from the field and also suffering a bit of a blow there. Asian 6 good to go. Katusha there with 14 kills. That was one hell of a rocket strike. More engineers on the way there for Mr. Nobody to help repair his staff. Well, the crowd please take out with just go for more issue and sixes. Now it's good to go in a few moments. More concerts as well there for crowd please up. Big two points wise 262 versus 423 well 259 now. So it's a bleeding out big two points fast and then you go to the barrage again. First shot flying off. I think trying to just hit the artillery he could also hit the pentathlon steel ponies nearby which would be of course pretty effective second shot goes off the mark as well so far one kill close to veteran to one close again sadly not a lot of luck here missing an opportunity to do some heavy damage to the pentathlon of course by uh, no greater fault of the uh, crowd pleaser there air support to call in to do some air reconnaissance almost got line for gun crew there almost but not quite could still get the steel ponies on the pentathlon Got air support into the rocket, straight around the Panzer 4 here. No, it's a bombing strike, it's a bombing strike, could catch a lot of stuff here. Oh! Ended up being less uh, impressed. Oh, there you go, gosh, still on plenty of squad there. Panzer 4 almost got taken out there. That was a close one, though, that was a close one, but uh, not quite as close as we would like to be, I guess, for some. H16 center pushing up in the right flank, got big push in from. Tiramis here to push back. We got the T7, we got the Max, and they got the Assault Gun. They're ready to, well, Assault Gun can't. In the South, T4 forming up for the lack of infantry. Needs to make, get more infantry in to push, right, further push there. Line for gun still standing, sort of. We got Sturm Hoswell plus another truck there for Asher uh, Blood. Might be going for the King Tiger now. Tiramis, meanwhile, it's definitely, I think, just firmly stuck in the Yak Tiger mode here. Grenade, though, takes out the Maxim. Things are certainly heating up here. Mr. Nobody can go for more T-34 soon. He could also right go for the H-5. Or he could also go for the H-6s. Almost got the field there. Go nice work there by crowd pleasers. Maxim. H-6 need repairs the T-70. 200 points left. He got the T-4 going ahead. He going straight to finish off the shot punted quarters. Nice work there by Mr. Nobody. That's a little firing down as well here. And there he goes. Shot punted quarters kaput. The Chusha there with 17 kills, ready to fire again in a few moments. They got 3 kills, halfway to 22 there, in fact, no, closer than that. A lot of back and forth here. Lots of attrition due to artillery. Get Chusha ready to unleash hell again. Guess it's going to be around here. There you go, trying to take out more lines from guns, and only one, in fact, two crews have been In fact, almost all but one line gun has now been silenced here. Last one is further up north. In the south, though, Ashley Bloss calling us air support here. Push is made here with infantry and armor. Already the armor's encountered issues and with the damaged engine, meaning the Panther Fork can't advance them, just the infantry. And they could be hit there by a counterattack by a tank once it gets fixed up. That's a lot of sandbags, by the way, from uh, Tito Misa, as you might notice, and Asher Blah. That's a lot of sandbags. Really been doing a lot of work with those sandbags. In the south of the assault continues the under Asher Blah. Mr. Nobody's finding it difficult to defend with uh, all of those very aggressive Luftwaffe flyers. North East German infantry advancing. How to ready to fire again. Will it reach Retchen 2 this time around? To the music, they're briefly considering a third Stuka's but apparently remembers he was actually planning on going for the 
Yakti again, so decides, you know, triple super tools might be a bit silly. We got an issue far away. The how to, there we go. Gains more kills and gains virtually two. Very good. Actually, Blight, something planned there, but I'm not entirely sure what it was before it got destroyed. Nine kills here. Making it difficult here for the gems from about. So, any pack also placing that here right in a very obvious artillery spot, which again is close to the most of their paths of movement from outside of the base. Issue 5 almost done here. Mr. Nobody is going for another T44. His pack has gone for it. Nice work there. We're seeing an intro with the T70. Victory points are slow coming in control of the first guard's mechanized call here as the third SS Totenkopf is starting to flounder here. There you go. Tinamisa is moments away here from the Yakti, except too many units. Fixing up the T70. Panther Pulse setting out close to Virginia 2. Seizing the southern victory point here. We got some quick air reconnaissance air support out here. Ah, uh, we got here the rally point. Interesting. First time I've seen someone build that one. Till the rain down. Better have a fine. There we go. We got the Yak Tiger out for Tiramiso. That will be a challenge to deal with for the Germans. And as you blow there with a King Tiger like on the way as well, that they're going to need a lot of heavy tank firepower. And of course, the Germans are going to need to well handle their armor to break through these Soviet lines. But they certainly got some uh, big guns either on the field already or on the way. More Tulu Fire though, running down here. In this case, managed to not really hit anything. Hard to back in operation as well. They're 10 kills, halfway to Veteran 3 already. Close one there. We got 195, 55. 55. Tillamis is trying to slowly grind his way through here. And there you go. We got the Yaktiga moving in. And we got a uh, T54 on the way there for crowd pleasing out. Not sure what he's planning here with the Yaktiga so far, except of course shooting up stuff with it, but sort of bigger plans than that. They should find they could soon find himself with their uh, in shooting distance here. And there we go. Oh, the Kachucha got spotted by the Yaktiga and destroyed. Oh, that's bad. Did he use a flare though? It certainly seems like it. Oh, that's a bit of a blow there to Mr. Nobody, having his Katusha knocked out there by a uh, very large anti-tank round. Katusha on the way there to replace the one lost. And Asher Blot is now moments away from the King Tiger. He's got the fuel, almost has the manpower as well, at which point again we're going to be looking at two German heavies on the road to Kharkov. After there again, just blasting away there bashes are bleeding out of victory points settled here in the face of Soviet might bit of quiet here push for the center as well here got the guards here and they keep wanting to call them partisans because I know again a lot of the time they're not serving as partisans again so this this family they just want to call them partisans they're guards airborne damn it grenade off you need to retreat the guards airborne soon and go get you out Stukas is far, continuing to rain down as well there, and uh, there we go, King Tigras, so there you go, two German heavy armoured pieces. That's going to be a bit of a challenge though for Mr. Nobody in crowd, please, but there you go, Panther 4 here on its own, getting swamped here with the two T-54s from 6s, no minds to come and escape there as well, there's a good chance that the T-54s could take out the Panther 4 if they can just hit it. Which so far they're struggling a bit with. Got moving out the right hand side, their flares popping off. King Tides mean to carve up the retreat of the Panther 4. Mr. Nobody just decides to fall back. And the center is slow approach there as well. Heavy presence in the east. Yaktiga there just with three kills so far. And Aerocon's in here, probably to get an idea there where the Germans aren't ironed and where there might be any sort of 
points of entry with a good assault. We got a field gun on the way there again from crowd pleaser. Holy smokes, that's one hell of a Katusha Barris. They're taking out huge chunks there of Azure Blood's infantry, leaving them dead in the dirt. Aircraft shot down though. How's they gaining between 3 14 kills, 11 kills on the Katusha? Keep it for looking to sneak up. There he goes, shot flat in the King Tiger. They'll bounce us off its armor. Come to the problem, got the field gun behind the machine gun there. One kill. King Tiger falling back. King Tiger setting up. Panther setting up. T-34 the flanking the King Tiger. Panther flanking the T-34 on return. T-34 though backing up the other T-34. Field gun there actually two very good. Heavy damage there. Mechanized Redmond down. In fact, they've lost the other one. And we got a Stugas was going down there as crowd please it goes for a bolt right behind enemy lines and takes up both of his T70. Holy smokes. Two thumbs up there to crowd pleaser. I mean that was definitely worth it. Even he lost the T70. He took up two Stugas of Fuses. That is a metric crap ton of resource just down there. Of course, a lot of artillery gone as well there. I mean, that's big. That's very big. And of course the T70 have done a lot of work. I mean, it would be great if you know the T70 had destroyed died, but you know. I'd say that was a worthy sacrifice. That was a sufficiently heroic death. Here it comes again for crowd, please. King Tiger here. T-34 getting off a hit there. That was a really nice thank with the T-70. I get two thumbs up. Back here though. T-34, 76, they're holding up. We got him to move forward. See, guards airborne from Mr. Nobody. Charging forward. Got the Yachtiger there with four kills. Hammering out whatever they can. Red Army starting to give the Germans a bit of a headache there. As the German tactics seem to be slightly floundering a bit here. There we go. Something got unloaded here with the Arc Tiger. And we got high explosive round here taking out, or at least attempt to take out the field gun there. Got the northern point here back for the German army. But yeah, as a block, what happened? Having a nice amount of armor has barely any infantry left and certainly no support weapons. That's the line guns are not been recruited, they've been destroyed. The situation is turning against the German army, and I think they need to switch up the tactics. I mean, right now, they're just sort of trying to play a style of warfare that's not really what the other commanders could at. They're trying to play an attritional style of warfare. They need to be more aggressive offense. They need to look to like, you know, deliver more decisive punching blows, and so far, again, they're just hoping they can keep slapping away at it. Until you Mr. Nobody crowd please just begins crying and says they'll go home to their mommy and daddy. Jaeger's charging at the field gun. What are those T-54 on the max opening up there? Two kills, or nine kills, but two, I mean. T-54 says after some damage, but nothing uh, critical. H5 creeping up, field gun backing up as well here. T-54 moving in, King Tiger there. Got his engine, engine fixed up, and there you go. T-34 goes for it, plans a penetrating hit. Another Katrusha missing nobody. Apparently lost another one. One of the Yacht Tigers took that one out as well. I'd not be surprised at this point. Field gun there. Another oh, Kidnap taking fire here. Oh, field gun there took out the machine gun, destroying it entirely. Absolutely brutal. 100 points left now for the German army. Things have uh, turned against the third SS here. We've got the Panther of Vetri 3 closing on Vetri 4. Yak Tiger setting up, closing on Vetri 2 1. And there you go. Guards airborne there, murdering away there, taking out the Panzerfuslila and the machine gun here, going down to the submachine gun wielding maniacs. Panzerfuslila dropped, and they could actually seize it. And that would definitely be bad news here for the Yak Tiger. Something's going to be faced off against the Panzerfuslila as well. The only small blessing is they don't get snares. Push back there, machine gun wiped out again for the Soviets. Got a Katrushin out for crowd, please. And we got the house there with 19 kills. Keep it falls in there, Panther Ball falling back. Close to Betsy 4. So there you go, Betsy 4. Definitely not bad. I'm actually the Soviets. King Tiger in there, backed up with the Arctic here. Finally pulling their armored forces a bit better together, but the situation for the. Uh, Germans is still a bit on the rubbish side. 
And they got 70 points left here. Field gun fire there, Rangdark. Are the foxes charging forwards? Takes on the T for the force from the six. Get you shimmering out. And we got the Katrusha there firing away. Trying to hit, I think, the stuff around the King Tag, around the hope to damage. And there you go, the folks nearby are heavily damaged there. T for the flank, ending up the damage to the King Tag, but not enough. Are they repaired here? We got Field ready to meet any German armor in advance there with a warm armor piercing welcome. There you go, the Yacht Tiger there bombarding it with the Tyclos around. Destroying the crew of the field gun. That was a very nice uh, series of shots there by Tillamese. So we got there though the guards airborne charging the flank. Let's get about to call them partisans. King Tiger trying to shoot through the ruins of the house there, but that didn't work out. Come to nearby. We got one in the upgrade here with the seventh there. Using the mobilized reserves. Quickly merging. Inch enough not using the large one, but I'm guessing. This is the heavy armor there, it's bigger, it's just better. Of course, heavy large squads that run the one can sort of do more damage. I'm guessing that's uh, missing nobody's logic, or he just didn't care. Up north here, though, crowd please take advantage of the German shift towards the south to quickly advance up north here, denying the Germans more resources and hit the victory points there as well. It's a good play there by crowd please. Of course, you might want to launch a larger sort of to get behind the German positions here, and of course, quite a bit of grief there. King Tiger, Yachtig advancing another consumer for Mr. Nobody. I'm surprised he's not going for any tank destroyers to try and deal with the. King Target Yakti, you can't wait to see what the Yakti can do to his anti tank and he's not careful. And there goes support called in here, Mr. Nobody's position suddenly got a lot more precarious. T fit for ramming, he's going to call in the rocket strike here. Oh! Heavy damage on the King Tiger. Air support called in, we got bombing strikes as well there. Oh my god! Rockets on the rear, bombs from the other side. King Tiger takes, Yakti takes it as well, the main gun is out. King Tiger goes down. Holy smokes! German heavy armored assault got nullified in a matter of moments. T-34 there wipes out the force squad. There's a grab the field gun here. Air support rain down the anti tank fire in the T-34 from six and destroys it. Total armored annihilation. And this is turning from Kharkov into Kursk. Which, funny enough, came about because of the third victory at Kharkov under Manstein. Anyways, only a Yacht Tiger's Oracle rule there for Mears in terms of armor. Ashley Blast still has the Panther 4, which is closing on the ace level there, but team and that could certainly file apart here. 50 points left here, counter attack here for the point. We got a machine gun stalling up here. Mr. Nobody's assault, but he charges men forwards. Heatless of the costs. Of course, the Yacht Tiger is not really going to do anything. Not with that gun. Machine gun about it, constantly being pinned down, suppressed. But there you go. As he spread out the assault machine, can't suppress them all. And there you go, just swarms from the other side and clears them out close there. Katrusha charging forwards for, I think, a bit of a mistake there, but also possibly close quarters badge. Up north here, Panther moving pursuit here. T Fed Force going forward, backed up by the Ishan 6 as well. They're gaining Vetsy 2. T Fed 4 went down in flames. So many explosions, so much armor being destroyed. Rocket fire raining down in Guinea's field and hanging about here. Another T-34 and 6 on the way there for Cloud Pleaser. Yacht Tiger there, steadily being repaired, but it's going to be happening at a very slow pace there. Almost glacial. Another T-34 and 6 on the way there for Cloud Pleaser. Mr. Nobody's got no armor, just Katusha's, and of course a bunch of infantry, including, of course, the Guards Airborne. Not fully enforced, still pushing ahead here. 27 versus 188. Another T-34 for Mr. Nobody. And I think as your blot is actually trying to set up another King Tiger team, so they're going for another Sugar Swiss run, and you're trying to take up and actually go for tanks to back up as Jack Tiger. I definitely feel like those double Sugar Swiss were a bit much, and I definitely think going for a third one now is a bit daft, if not a bit dumb. Grams in the point, we got the guards here, here being assaulted. Grenade off. Lots of set bar wire here. 
basically making it harder for the opponent to just charge in there. It's going to expose them more to the machine gun as well. And also makes it harder for them to rush the machine gun with anything. So, definitely some nice work there by Crowd. Please, a good use of our wire. Yachtig is back in action. So it's uh, not really hitting anything. As you blow there, it's about to go for the second Königstiger. Spawning another big kitty duo. And there you go, can call it in now. Just need to press the button. Just press that button. You get that King Tiger Nation. Six shooting weight, shots bouncing. Ace Panther 4, of course, quite solid. No King Tiger yet there, though. Damaging the Yachtiger once more. Oh wait, it's a bit more fuel there, my apologies, for some reason my man told me it's 270, but no, it's 280. I'm being dumb. There we go, now, actually blowing calling the King Tiger. Second King Tiger in here, really a lot of heavy arm being committed here. Both in terms of tank destroyers and tanks. The note, by the way, the Yacht Tiger really didn't see any action on the Eastern Front. Not a lot, at least it was primarily used on the Western Front alongside the Yacht Panther. Which did not see a lot of usage on the uh, eastern front either. No fun fact there. Stuff exploding here. Germans are down to 21 here. Another push here. Yak Tiger taking very far there. Shots fly flying at it. Some bouncing, some not. Air support called in here. Yak Tiger at half health. Quickly going down here. And we got another rocket strafe here trying to predict with the Arctic's moon. Take it out. There you go. Rockets, though, missing it by a mar 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 narrow margin. But it managed to escape here. Very close to T2. Gets the T-34. And immediately switch your tackle around here with the infantry around the point. The is already dying in large numbers. Stugas was taken out there by a flank. As crowd please takes advantage of the German focus on Miss Nova today. Good read there by the crowd pleaser. We got 188 versus 21 here. Yak Tiger needs to fire away there. 13 kills. More fire there. More death. King Tiger can't take back up with the Panther 4, but not enough in to back it up, I think. There we go. Gun each try flanking the King Tiger here. Station 60 gauges from the front. And it's already ace up. There we go. Another hit, but there you go. We got the Yak Tiger flanking the H5 there. Oh, holy smokes. We got 19 points left. Veterans 1 gain there, T54 trying to get behind here, Adrian 6 firing at the King Tiger, King Tiger down to half health, Pandemonium reigns, the H5 explodes as the munitions is cooked off, T54 takes out the Ace Panzer 4, King Tiger is into revenge but it is strong here to catch up, Infantry charging here, blind there at the victory point, dying here to the Constructs and the Maxims, and Mines, 13 points left, that's on 88, and there we go, surrender, a loss here for the German army. A victory for the Soviet army, an absolutely brutal 2 vs 2 right here on the road to Kharkov. With heavy casualties on both sides. Very nasty fight there, the Germans tried to win through through sheer artillery rather than just relying on the Oberkommando's strength which against maneuver and firepower. And uh, I think that ended up costing them a bit. I feel like, again, triple line for guns and double stickers versus was them getting too greedy on the road to Kharkov. I can understand it, but clearly it did not work out. And in part, you know, so, I tell you, it's kind of all the Soviet strength anyway. So at least the sort of one they were hoping to do with anyway. So that did not work out particularly well and ultimately undercut the strategy in the long run line. The Soviets just crashed them beneath the armored weight of Stalin. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. Hope you learned something from it. If you did, subscribe, like, share, comment on it, tell your friends, tell your family, but don't tell your enemies. This is Imperial Engine. Cheers. Thank you for watching. You're all a wonderful audience. And if you like what you do, you can donate or pledge on Patreon. Links in the video description. Every dollar makes me that much more happy. So thank you all and see you all tomorrow for another episode. Bye.